So according to the cognitive approach, um, sleep is usually used to facilitate information processing. We are processing information all the time as humans and we sort of struggle at times to understand how best to do that and um, especially when you're awake there's a lot of other stuff going on and sometimes it can be overwhelming. Well the cognitive approach says that we use sleep to make it a little bit easier and we do quite a lot of our information processing during that sleep. Um, information that's gathered during the day is secured in the long-term memory. There's a lot of evidence to suggest that sleep is actually the thing that is responsible for moving stuff from the short-term memory to the long-term memory or from the long-term memory kind of making sure it stays there. Um, we know that neurons are more active during REM sleep and they're able to kind of consolidate these memories and kind of bed them down as it were. Now. The cognitive approach believes that actually one of the ways that um, sleep does this is through dreams um, and particularly um, kind of uses these dreams to solve problems, to engage with ideas, to go back over the events of the day and kind of put them together in our brains and actually solidify them there. Um, and kind of often we use dreams to kind of synthesize and recombine different information, take information we've taken in during the day and we move it around and experience it in a different way. <laughs> and actually, a lot of cognitive psychologists believe that dreams are very similar to waking cognition, i.e. the process of thinking. Dreams are pretty similar to that. Now, Domhoff in 2011 argued that dreams kind of what happens when the mind doesn't have anything else to do during the day our mind has lots to do remember lots of our bodies function are autonomic breathing um uh, standing upright you know um, a lot of our function our body's functions happen automatically they don't need our mind to kind of uh, think about that you don't need your mind to be thinking about how am i going to process this burger that i just ate right that all happens your body does it that's called autonomic functions but when we're awake, there's loads of things to think about, like, oh, you know, what am I going to buy for from the shops? What am I going to eat for dinner? Where am I going to go tomorrow? How am I going to deal with this particular thing or that particular thing? So Domhoff says that at night, we don't have all those things to think about because our, our mind isn't alert and awake. So dreams are sort of like basically what the brain does when it doesn't have anything else to do and he says compare dreams to what we call daydreams or fantasies you know you're just sitting there and you're sort of thinking like what would it be like if i could fly or you know what oh yeah what would i do or like oh imagine if that or kind of daydreaming and just thinking about nothing we don't do that when we're busy. We do that when we're bored or when we haven't got anything else to think about. So Donghoff said, well, dreams are just the same. When, we're, when our mind is essentially bored because it's not doing anything because we're asleep, we have these kind of fantasies, these daydream, and they adapt based on input um, and they use what we call schemas. Now, we've talked about schemas way, 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 way back before the summer. Essentially, schemas kind of a, a general way of thinking about things. So our daydreams take, uh, sorry, our dreams take our kind of general way of thinking about things and kind of adapt them a little bit based on what's happened that day or recently or what we're worrying about. So for example, uh, you know, if you've just watched a scary movie, then you might have a nightmare about that sort of thing. If you're very anxious, then your dreams might be related to that anxiety. So that's a kind of general idea about how dreams work. What I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to watch a video from an expert, um, Professor Robert Stickgold, um, who is going to talk to you about actually his work and the work of his students on looking at how our, how sleep works. Now this is quite a long video. Um, it's uh, I think about 18 minutes. Um, so rather than just get you to watch it and then just give you a whole bunch of questions, I've sort of structured the questions a little bit to look at the three main areas that he talks about, the three tasks. So to begin with, he talks about sleep extracting the, the gist of an experience, okay? And you might not have heard that term and he doesn't really explain it very well, but the gist of an experience is like sort of the general sense of things. So it's not like a specific, like I know exactly what that means, what, what was said and I've got a memory, exact, you know, a memory of everything that was said. It's more a sort of general sense of what happened. So you might come out of one of my psychology lessons and your pal might be like, oh, did you understand everything we did in that lesson? Um, and you might be like, well, not everything, but I kind of got the gist of it. I kind of understood generally what we're talking about. Um, 
So that's the first section. Then, uh, and there's a little experiment there that he does with the audience of the talk that he's given. I remember when we could go to things, guys. Oh, that seems a long time ago. And then underneath that, he talks about... Uh, so then I want you to do that little experiment, and I want you to answer some questions about that. Then he talks about sleep fostering insight, like this kind of idea of like going to sleep and then waking up and you're like... Oh, I know exactly how to do this thing that I've been struggling with for ages. This literally happened to me the other day, guys. It's very boring, but I was trying to figure out how on earth to deal with the audio on this, and I was getting very stressed. I went to sleep. I woke up. I was like, oh, boom, I'll do that. So in, that happens all the time, right? And then finally, he talks about the role of dreams, like what dreams are actually for, okay? So I'd like you to... Um, I would suggest watching it in those three sections. I've put the, the time codes in there for you. So watch them in the different sections and complete the tasks.